The fourth chapter. Verse one. This verse I have typed out in the front of my Bible in different translations. I use this verse to encourage myself many times in the ministry. I pray this verse encourages you as well. It says, since we have this ministry, we have received mercy. God, God has called you to ministry. You didn't chase after ministry. Only a foolish person would chase after ministry. Ministry is difficult enough even when God has called you. But God has called you and chosen you to the ministry. And he's given you his mercy. Oftentimes when we get frustrated and discouraged in ministry, we can draw on his mercy. When people frustrate us, we need his mercy. When we get discouraged because our ministry isn't growing, we need his mercy. But the last part of that verse says we do not lose heart. The Lord wants you encouraged today not to lose heart in your ministry. No matter the challenges in your ministry. Even though you have cultural challenges in India that I don't have in the USA, we all have challenges. However, I encourage you, do not lose heart. God has called you, God has chosen you. He will equip you and empower you to fulfill your ministry. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus at all times. Even in your ministry, He will lead you in the triumph and victory. Now, another scripture, Galatians chapter 6. Verse 9. The word of God says not to grow weary while doing good. It is a good work that you are doing in ministry. It can be challenging. People can be frustrating. But you cannot grow weary while doing good. The word of God gives us a promise in this verse. It tells us there is a due season. That if you don't give up, you will reap. So in those moments when you're getting weak or growing weary, Focus on the promise of God. Focus on the fact that He's called you. 
God is for you, not against you. And He will finish the work as you trust in Him. As I shared earlier, the theme the Lord gave me for this is spirit and power ministry, leadership. It is a good thing to get educated. We need to study to show ourselves approved of God. We need to memorize scripture. We need to learn the word of God. But you could memorize all the scripture from Genesis to Revelation. But without the spirit of God, it will profit nothing. We need the anointing of God and the power of the spirit in our ministry. We need to be filled with the Spirit. We need to be led with the Spirit. We need to be empowered by the Spirit. Even though Jesus was the Son of God on this earth, He lived as a man. But he was filled with the Spirit. He was led by the Spirit. He was empowered by the Spirit. Luke chapter 4. Verse 1. Yes, Pashutama Purna, Yosan Nadi, Nundi, Tiriuchi, Nalu Tirula, Pucha, the Arani Mulu, Nanaku Padi. Jesus, it says right here, was filled with the Spirit. Yes, it is poor Apucheta, Nepopatigam, Apu Purna, and Matuchus, the Pashutama Purna, and Matuchus. And he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Apucheta, Arani Mulu, Nanaku Padi, and Matuchus. Sometimes in your ministry you feel like you're in the wilderness. The following verses talk about Jesus being tempted by the devil. In your life and in your ministry you will be tempted and tested. Even though you are filled with the Spirit. Even though you are led by the Spirit. Temptation will still come to you. You will still be tested. But if you pass the test like Jesus did. You will walk in the power of God. After Jesus was tempted and tested, I want you to read verse 14. Hopefully, this excites you. Jesus, filled with the Spirit, was led by the Spirit. Tempted and tested by the devil in the wilderness. But he resisted Satan. And he returned in the power of the Spirit. When you are tempted and tested by the devil, if you will resist the temptation, oftentimes to give up and quit the ministry, when you pass the test, refuse to quit, you will come out of that temptation even 
stronger in the Lord with more anointing and more power. Ashoda Nuchi, Marita Baluto, Marita Shikito, Mara Bite Pedivara. My wife and I have been through many struggles over the years. Neluna Bharya, Anek Sansal Gapuni, uh Kastal Guna Manu Vin Vindam. Struggles personally and in ministry. Vikatanga Pachiri Lokura. But every time we came through them, we came out stronger in the Lord. Stronger faith. More anointed. More power. So don't grow weary in doing good. There is a due season for you. And you will reap. So men and women of God, I challenge you today. I encourage you today. Stay strong in the Lord. Keep preaching this gospel. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. And he will lead you into victory. Hallelujah. Okay, I want to share some of my teaching from principles of leadership. Principles of leadership. If you're taking notes, write down this scripture. Balichet the Kaka, David Chitta Prakaru, Mr. Purukuru, Durlava, Apexha the Kaka, Sitamastunu, me Matinuna, David Mundu, Pai Picharo Chay, Sudan, the Guide, me to Apoka Kupadavar, Wai Paina, Prabhu Lane Pundaka, Mandapu, Madhuluga. In this verse, you're told to feed the flock of God. Devi Mandalu, Nate Vagamandalu, or we go to Susan. As a pastor and leader, you're to feed God's sheep. You're to take oversight over your ministry in church. Not because you feel forced to, but because you want to. It may not be a challenge here in India. But it can be in the US. And the American market custom either. He says not to be in the ministry for filthy lucre. But it means our motive is to be because we want money from preaching. Yes, the labor is worthy of their hire. Yeah. But your motive for ministry isn't for money. And we're to be an example to the flock of God. Okay, here's some principles you can write down as I share with you. A leader must have followers to be a leader. A leader must have always to be a leader. Some people think they're a leader but have no followers. If no one is following you, you're not a leader. But if people are following you, then you're a leader. But as a leader, you can't do ministry alone. You must have other leaders serving with you and under you. 
దేవుని పరిచయంలో ముందుకు కొనసాగే కొనసాగే వారుగా ఉండాలి it is important when choosing leaders to pray to pray prarthana cheyadaniki kontha mandi naayakulu yerparchukodam mukyam avasaram just because somebody may be gifted kontha mandi talantulu kaligina vaaru ani kaadu gaani you still want them to have good character vaarlo talantulu tho kuda manchi pravartana vaallo undali you want them to be an example as well వారు మాదృకరంగా ఉండే జీవితాన్ని వారు కలిగి ఉండాలి సో యు ఆన్లీ అపాయింట్ లీడర్స్ యాస్ ద లార్డ్ డైరెక్ట్ కాబట్టి దేవుడు ఎవరినైతే నాయకులుగా ఎందుకోమని నడిపిస్తాడో ఆ నడిపిని మనం అనుసరించాలి సో యు నీడ్ టు అలౌ ద హోలీ స్పిరిట్ టు గైడ్ యు పరిశుద్ధాత్మ దేవుడు చేత మీరు నడిపుకొని వారు ఉండాలి ఇన్ చూజింగ్ ద రైట్ పీపుల్ టు వర్క్ విత్ యు అండ్ ఫర్ యు నీ కొరకు నీతో పాటుగా పని చేసే వారిని ఎంపిక చేసిన విషయాలు దేవుడి పరిశుద్ధాత్మ నడిపు అవసరమైన a leader may choose an inner circle or corner may konsaru manaku samipasthala ga unnatu vaadi manam enukuntu untam jesus had the twelve yesu christu varukaithe 12 mandi aa samipasthala untaru shishyulu but he also had the three mari aa parini mandilo muguru mukhya pramukhyam kaligina vaaru ga untaru shishyulu there are some that you spend more time with meeru adhika samayam gadipe vaaru mandu untaru to train and disciple them for ministry parichayalo vaarni tarvidi vadaniki vaarni protsayinchadam some other people may get jealous kontha mandi vaarni chuchi asai pade vallu untaru believe in your showing favoritism for a few meer ekkuga vaari pattla pakshapatham chupistunna ani baavinchi aa vidhanga asai pade vallu untaru you can't be concerned with that dani pattichukovalsam avasaram ledhu you need to pour into those the lord chooses దేవుని ఎవరిని ఏర్పరచుకున్నాడో వారిని ఆ విధంగా దేవుని ప్రభువులు బలపరచడం అవసరమైన మీ వ్యక్తి వ్యక్తిత్వంతో మరి స్టాఫ్ మెంబర్స్ లేకపోతే మీరు ఏర్పరచుకున్న నాయకులు ఏకమస్ కలిగి ఉండాలి కష్టతరమైనటువంటి వారిగా మీరు ఏర్పడ కష్టతరమైన వారిని ఏర్పరచుకోవాల్సిన అవసరం లేదు మీ దర్శనం గురించి వాదోపవాదాలు పెట్టుకునే వాళ్ళు ఉంటే అటువంటి వారిని పెట్టుకోవాల్సిన అవసరం మీ దర్శనాన్ని తో వాళ్ళు ఏకీకరించి వారిగా ఉన్నట్లయితే అటువంటి వారిని మన నాయకులు ఏర్పరచుకోవచ్చు If they don't understand they can ask you questions. వారికి ఏ అర్థం కాని విషయం ఏమైనా ఉంటే మిమ్మల్ని ప్రశ్నించొచ్చు. But if they're always questioning your motives and vision. కాని వాళ్ళు పదే పదే మీ దర్శనం గురించి మీ యొక్క ఉద్దేశాల గురించి వాళ్ళు ప్రశ్నిస్తూ ఉంటే those are the wrong people to put in the leadership. వాళ్ళ నాయకత్వం నాయకత్వంలో ఉండదగి తగని వారు ఉండడానికి వీలు లేదు. Staff members must be in agreement with the goal of the ministry. మరి పరిచయం యొక్క గురి మీద నాయకులు అగ్రి అవ్వాలి అనగా ఒప్పందం కలిగి ఉండాలి ఆ పరిచయంలో సీనియర్ లీడర్ గా లేకపోతే ముఖ్యమైనటువంటి నాయకునిగా దేవుడు మీకు ఆ స్థానాన్ని కల్పించాడు రెండవ అధ్యాయంలో మనం చూస్తే what was that to write the vision make it plain yeah. mm. darshanani spashtanga telichevan raayadu that those that read it will run with it abaku grandu rendu vaache abaku abaku rendu rendu vaache rendu vaache sadhana ve isudu ga అది తప్పక నెరవేరు అది ఆలస్యంగా వచ్చిన దాని కనిపెట్టు అది తప్పక జరుగు జాబు చేయకవచ్చు those are powerful verses of scripture later vaadulo avi chala balavam balavam kaligina vachana so god gives you 
the senior leader of the vision. You share it with your team of leaders. They need to support your vision. Sometimes you can have leaders that have their own vision. And then try to impose their vision on your vision. That is division. They need to support your vision. There must be one vision and purpose for your ministry. Team members must be loyal and trustworthy. Leaders that you appoint must be loyal to the Lord first. As you should. And they need to be trustworthy. If they're not trustworthy, they shouldn't be in leadership. If you appoint leaders under you and find out later on they're not trustworthy, and you can't get them to that place where you can trust them, If your leaders don't share your vision, they're not loyal and trustworthy, you need to be bold and remove them from leadership. You need to be strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Team members must be teachable and meek. You don't want members on your team that are teachable. You don't. If they're not teachable, remove them from leadership. I have learned this from years of ministry experience. You really need to take your time and pray. Get to know people first. Uh, uh, see that they're loyal and trustworthy first before you appoint them in leadership because it is more difficult to remove somebody from leadership than to wait in the first place Amen Amen here are some spiritual essentials to being successful. Number one, a godly leader must have strength. Number one, a godly leader must have strength. You need to be strong in the Lord. Leaders build up their strength by praying in the Spirit. That is spirit in our leadership. There are times in ministry you don't know what to pray. 
But when you are filled with the Spirit and pray in tongues, you are building yourself up in your most holy faith. So if you're to be a strong leader, you need to pray in the Spirit often. Leaders build up their strength by reading and studying the Word of God. So if you're to be strong, you need to be a man or woman of prayer and a student of the Word. A godly leader must have courage. You must lead without fear. You cannot fear man's opinion. The only opinion that matters is God. He calls you not man. If God calls you, He's approved of you. Man will recognize your call. But you're not to care about their opinion. Every decision you make as a leader must be made according to the word of the Lord and the leading of the Holy Spirit. Not the opinion of man. Sometimes people in your church will come to you. And they'll say, why don't we do this? Or why don't we do that? You need to say, I do as the Lord speaks to me in leading. Amen. Sometimes they can be giving you good advice. It can be a good suggestion. Don't automatically throw it out. Still pray about it. But if the Lord doesn't speak to you to do it, then do not. Sometimes leaders, because a certain church has done one thing and grown really big, Sometimes you see one church do something and they grow really big. So then you think, I can do that and my church will grow big. That often will not work for you. You have to do what God has spoken to you to do. Many years ago, I did a, a postcard mail out. And then invite about my church to many homes. Statistics show that many people should come. Possibly 100 new people come to my church. From that mail out. Five people came. Spent a lot of money on it. I was discouraged. But I determined to fast and pray and hear from God. When I prayed and asked God what to do, He spoke to me this. He said, I'm not going to build your ministry like other ministries. 
Is that I'm not going to build your ministry by the plans and programs of man. I'm going to build your ministry supernaturally. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That fired me up. Hallelujah. Unless the Lord builds the house, our labors in vain. That does not mean we throw out plans or programs. But we do them only by the leading of the Lord. I'd much rather the Spirit of God bring people to my ministry. I want them having an encounter with the Holy Spirit. I want them to experience the supernatural. In the U.S., a lot of bigger churches. They have fancy lights and entertainment. They have huge programs and gimmicks for children. And they grow big and draw many people. But few of them have the Spirit of God moving. To be able to hold my grandson as he, for this last time. As I surrender him to you. I cried as I'm crying now. They then, she then passed him on to my daughter. And she held him as well. And we stayed in that room. Other nurses were standing there. They were crying. But I know they still saw our faith and our strength. And we held our grandson until he breathed his last breath. <laughs> Through tears and a broken heart. We still example strength in the Lord. The very next day, he was born again. 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 If you want to stay home Sunday and rest and grieve, we can preach for you and handle the service. I said, thank you, I appreciate that. But I need to preach the word. I said, I need to preach the word. Amen. That is exampling strength. But behind the scenes, my heart was broken. I was grieving. But I knew where to get my strength. The very is you to your people. To impart gifts into them. The fire of God into them. Amen. 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 As we impart into you today. The Lord knows exactly what you need. 
And when I lay hands on you and anoint you with oil, he rose the time of the Abishak of the Lipopoli, the enemy, and the king. I will tell you, Abishak will tell you about the Nado. The fire of God is going to infuse your being. Oh, they would be punished. You're going to go back to your church. You're going to go back to your church. No more discouraged. No more frustrated. No more lacking passion. And I believe the next church meeting that you have, the fire of God is going to be released in your church. Hallelujah. God's going to set you on fire today. So you can go back to your church.